Okay, thank you. I'm going to present a work title uh, by Boraron, Magneto by Boraron and Excitant Characteristics in Nanostructures. Okay, we can go on. Next slide. Next slide. Thank you. I am uh, Fobaso Bonio Floret Corinne. I'm an ISP alumna. I participated at the ISP school in 2016 at Kigali. And during this time, I was, this year I entered in PhD in, 2000, in November 2016. And actually I obtained my PhD in June 2020. I was supervised by the professors Lucon Cornelius Fai and Fortu Alain Gervais. Our domain of research is condensed matter physics, and it is also the name of our laboratory here. In my research work, I'm interested in correlated quantum system described on one hand by the electron phonon interaction and on the other hand, by the transition between electronic states in semiconductor structures with very small dimensionalities. Okay, uh, after my PhD, of course, I continue to train my junior, my junior colleague at the laboratory, and I participated also to the tutorial in subjects like electrostatic, electromagnetism, and um, two, three, and group theory also. Okay, we, are, we can go on. I'm going to present the synthesis of our work. In condensed matter physics, one of the fundamental problems is based on the understanding of the interaction between the electron and its environment. This topic, the title of our work is based on the thematic of the study of correlated quantum system. The axis of the research here includes the quantum bit dynamics, photon nanostructures, electron hole interaction, in semiconductor in semiconductors to achieve our goals we use different methods and the method that we are we are that we use sometimes are the little pi method or var, uh, modified little pi method the pk method and the feynman path integral method these are theoretical methods so in our lab, we are doing many theoretical calcul calculations. You can move on, please. Uh -huh. Okay. I will start by the this presentation of of what folks, please. The phonon is a mechanical energy. So if you have atom in the crystal, a crystal, a crystal lattice, the, the atom will vibrate. Now we explain the view of polaron. If an electron, please, here we have animation, you have to, to type each time, please, prof. No, it's okay. No. Um, wait. Again yes. or before? Before. Okay, before. Please return back. I'm trying back. to go back, but. It's... Yes. Yes, I'm trying to turn back, but uh, it's not turning it's back. Sorry, it's difficult. Okay. It's not turning back. Hold on. Just hold on a second. I will. Uh, Maybe, um, okay, so it's on page seven. Slide seven. 
Slide seven. Okay. Yes. So let, hold on. <clears throat> seven. Yeah, just so uh, it will uh, come up soon. Seven. Yes. Um, okay. Um, so. Okay. Yeah. So what do you want me to do here? Uh, please type one time. Okay. An electron in a, we, we are going to present here a view of polar run. So we presented before a, a phonon, a simple phonon. If you suppose that we are inside a crystal lattice or ionic semiconductor, and if you introduce a negatively charged electron in this crystal lattice, the the polar the, the the polar semiconductor is also positively charged or negatively charged. So the positive charge we wanted to attract the elect, the negatively charged electron. And this motion we repeat each every time. So in the crystal let the crystal lattice we start to vibrate as we observe. We can type. Is that okay, how it we is? observe. Yeah. We have to observe that electron can move. Hello. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. We can observe that electron can move in the crystal because the positively charged in the crystal we wanted to attract the negative, the negatively charged electron. Now all the crystal will start vibrating and. After this vibration, you can move on, please. It is difficult. Okay, this is slide seven. You will observe that there will be a kind of link, a polarization that will be created, that the electron moving inside the polar crystal will be created in the, in the ionic semiconductor or polar crystal. Here we cannot see the 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 slide is just white. Okay, hold on, hold on a second, okay. Let me let me we download just, your. We, hold on, hold on for right, hold on. Um. Let me let me let me let me download your slide from uh, the one that you sent me. Okay, hold on a second. That's. Um. You sent me one yesterday. Let me see if that one it's the same thing. Best. Yeah, just just uh, don't don't go away. And uh, uh, let me share my screen now, and we'll see if this one is better. Just hold on, please. Okay, okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's still loading. Um, now let me do this. We'll see if this one is better. Okay, so. Okay. Um. Yeah, seven. Slide, so, mm -hmm. slide seven. Okay, slide six no. now. This is five. This is six. Yes, now slide seven. Okay, so this is what you were explaining before, okay? Yes. Why don't you restart yes, from it's... here? Restart okay. from here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, in figure one, we present an artistic view of, of a phonon, which is a quantum of vibrational mechanical energy. Now we can move on. If you have a set of a crystal, 
yes, in a polar medium, a crystal. We have a set of phonons. If you introduce an electron in the in the crystal, the electron, please prove type one type. Yes. The electron in the polar medium is negatively charged. Since the polar medium in the polar medium we can have positively charged particles or negatively charged particles. So the electron will be attracted by the positively charged in the polar medium. So it will start to move as we observe. Please pop one time. Please pop type one time. Yeah, we see the electron moving. I should type again. Hello? Yes. yes, the electron is moving like that because it has the positive. Yes, type again. Yes, now we will create the quantum of vibrational mechanical energy. So in all the polar medium, the crystal will vibrate. This will give, we will give birth to the polarization created. Move on, please, Puff. Hello? Yes, it's moved now. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Please move on, yes. Yes, please move on, please. I am on yes. page nine. Thank you. Yes, it's okay. No. Go back one time, please. This one? Yes, yeah, it's okay. Yes, yes, Prof, yes. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Yes, I, I just want to explain here that there will be a kind of polarization created. So just because of this one electron moving in the polar in the polar medium. So the positively charged we wanted to attract the negatively charged particle. Uh, all all of them wanted to attract the electron. So we observe that the free electron, hello? We can hear you, go ahead. So the free electron is now dressed by the polarization that it has created in the polar medium. So we can move on. Yes, so this is a also artistic view of polar run. So we have the same electron in blue color, but which is now dressed by the polarization that it has created. So in 1933, Lev Davidovich Landau described this part, the, uh, called this particle polar runs. So in semiconductor, an additional electron deform the surrounding lattice and couple itself to the polarization field induced by this deformation. So the quasi-particle form is now is then called polaron. So the polaron is a kind of fermionic particle, uh, still negatively charged. But if you have two two polarons that attract together, please both. And excuse me, there is one question. Do you want to take it now? I don't. On chat, please. Uh, I can read the question if you want, but okay. do you want to take okay. the question now? Yes. Okay. okay. So there is one question. Does the electron yes. execute a brown, Brownian motion? But how do you explain this? 
from the point of view of adiabatic approximation. It appears that heavier ions are moving relative to the electron. That's the question. Do you want to try to answer that? Yes. Here we are not, we are not, we studied just the, the, the electron moving in the polar, in the, in the polar major. If you are talking about, uh, we are not talking about Brumian brom, motion here, or adiabatic, or adiabatic, adiabatic what, please? I want Approximation. To, I, not on the point of view of adiabatic approximation. And here the notion of AJ atom here is not is not is not the case. So I think it's a, another problem, but this, not the one of, of Polaron here. We are we are presenting just the simple the simple view of, of electron in a in a in a okay. polar medium or ionic semiconductor because okay. we can have two types two 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 system where the polaron can be formed here i present the one of polar medium there but we can also have the one of ionic semiconductor okay thank you i think it answers the questions yes please, please go on thank you okay okay in figure 2b we have a, a view of bipolaron and the bipolar one is formed when the repulsion force between the two polar one is very weak. So the attraction force between the two is strong, despite the fact that they are they have the same charge. But in a polar in the in this milieu of ionic of polar medium, we can have the formation of, of bipolar one. In table one, we have the electron phonon coupling constant so in the in the literature we have materials that are semiconductors they are characterized by the electron phonon coupling constant in general when the coupling constant is less than one we are saying that we are in a weak we are in the weak coupling when the coupling constant denoted by alpha is between uh, one and six. We say that we are in intermediate coupling regime. And when it is greater than seven, greater than six, so we have strong coupling regime. So the in figure three, we have semiconductor type that are usually found in, in the literature. So we have, uh, for example, the arsenium, the, uh, the indium arsenide, gallium arsenide, gallium, or uh, phosphorus. So these are kind of semiconductor where we can found, we, we can study the, where we, that we can use to study polaronic properties. So in figure four, in figure four, we have the view of qubit. The qubit, here we have the ground state, which is a kind of first level, and the second excited, the second level, which is the excited, excited state, a qubit then can be realized by considering two polarization states of a phonon, of photon, or two states of an electron up and down. So the two level system are generally used as elementary unit of information storage. So in all our work here, we try to, mod to model the qubit. We try to model qubit. We can move on. So in the work that we present, the, the purpose is to talk, of the talk is to use the Lilo Pi method, because we said that we are using theoretical method to derive the properties of Polaron, bipolarons in, in nanostructure. So we are going to follow the, the plan that is coming. Please. 
Okay, we present, we give a preview on Lilo Pine method, Ubrecht method, we give some application and we will conclude. Please. Oh, please, one yes, time again. Page 13, is it okay? Yes, please, please, Pope, one time again. Hello. Okay. Okay, remember that we said that the electron phonon interaction is called, is what we call in general polaron. So we describe the Hamiltonian of the system as region one, where we have the kinetic energy of electron, the phonon energy, and the interaction energy between electron and, and phonon. The different terms are given by region two, three, and four. Now, in general, in quantum mechanics, we are going to quantify the third one and the fourth, the third equation and the fourth equation. Yes. So we start by we start by equation by do the, doing the transformation of a, of equation three, which is the phonon energy. So we start by we said that we have created a polarization when the electron is moving in the crystal. So we write the equation of the potential VR as function of the polarization, where G represents the electric field displacement ve vector. And this, where the epsilon is the total dielectric constant, we can calculate the deformation potential energy as given in relation seven, which is also expressed in terms of polarization. We can move on. Okay. So from equation three and equation five, we can obtain the, the, the expression of dielectric, the total dielectric constant written in terms of frequency of the, the frequency of the the frequency of the system. Now we do we we do the change of variable of of the, of the change of variable in order to obtain the phonon energy as given in relation 10. So we observe here that we, as in general, we observe that we can do the quantification of this kind of energy as, as it is the case usually in quantum mechanics. Okay, we are doing the quantification move on okay so when it's, it's still the phonon energy we are we transform it in terms of two different terms this term will form the creation and annihilation operator we can move on so we obtain the Hamiltonian of phonon in the second quantification, where the creation annihilation and annihilation operator are given as follow. These are the bosonic operator because a phonon is a kind of bosonic particle. Now it is okay with the phonon energy. We have quantified the phonon duration three that we, we, we have seen before. Now it is given by relation 12. Let us find now the electron phonon interaction also in second quantification. So we start from equation four before presented. We do the, this, the Fourier transform of equation five. Please go type one time. Okay, we just want to remember the equation five that we presented before. The equation of the potential, the deformation potential expressed in terms of polarization. Doing the, the Fourier transform, we have a relation 13. And this permits us to have the expression of 
potential and polarization in terms of wave vector. Finally, the interaction energy can have the form of 15. And by replacing the different term, we have the electron phonon interaction Hamiltonian given as it is present. This is the Froelich Hamiltonian. So the name of this uh, interaction energy has been given by Froelich. We can move on. We can move on. We can move on. Could I sit still? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. We, 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 as we said in relation for in relation four, we have written the in, the interaction energy of of polar on simple simply as minus EVR. But doing the transformation that we observed before, we can write it in terms of relation 16. Again. And we can write the interaction Hamiltonian in terms of creation and annihilation vectors. Yes. Again. This is VQ is the potential the deformation potential after the flow transform done we express we observe that the calculation of vq is expressed in terms of alpha you remember that alpha is the coupling constant so it characterizes the material so in the interact in the electron in the electron phonon interaction Hamiltonian, we have the coupling constant alpha which 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 is present so this is an an interesting parameter in polaronic in, in, in polaronic system vq so it is <coughs> so finally relation 18 is the you, the usual the the most common Hamiltonian of polaron. So in general, when you see the how to write the Hamiltonian of polaron, it is written as relation 18. The first term is the kinetic energy of electron. Second term is the energy of a phonon, and the last term is the energy of interaction between electron and phonon. So the idea of the method that we are going to use is to calculate the energy as given in ratio 19. Here, we are going to present the Lillopine. The idea of Lillopine methods is to use two operators, S1 and S2, to calculate the energy of a polar run. Yes, Prof. So, these, op these operators are canonical transformation given by relation 20. The S1 is the operator, is the operator given in terms of electronic particle, and it is used in the system to eliminate this electronic variable. And S2 is the, uh, is the operator to displace the phonon variable. And we use the vacuum state in order to calculate the energy of, of electron, of the energy of polaron in general. So we have P, capital P, which is the, kinet, the momentum of all the polaron. And we can express small p which is the momentum of electron in terms of the momentum of polaron and the momentum of phonon. We can move on. So we can rewrite S1 as ratio 22 and S2 is written as ratio 23, where the F is what we call variational function, what we call variational function. And they are used in order to 
found the most the, to minimize the ground state energy of a polar run. So the idea of Lilopine is based on these two operators. And the idea of Lilopine is to calculate just the ground state energy of polar run. It's, if we can move on. So here we are wish we just show how to how to apply the first operator, the first Lilopine operator on the Hamiltonian, on the Polaron, on the Polaron and Hamiltonian. So we just we just want to show the transformation. It, yes, Paul, we can move on. So the idea is to apply the first term of the energy, which is circle. Again, is is we just want to, take to present how to apply it, but we know that it is easier. So we can move on proof, please. Yes. So S one take each term. Again. Again, proof. Yes. So that is how we apply the S1 on each term. And finally, using the property 25, we obtain the, uh, the application of S1 on the different term of the Hamiltonian. It's okay, Puff. Again. So now, as we observe, we have S1. When we observe on the, uh, the last term, there is no more the exponential term. So we have eliminated the electronic variable in the electron phono interaction Hamiltonian, so the last term. Now we can move on, please, Paul. OK, now. To, to find the energy, we now wanted to apply the second transformation. So by, by applying the second transformation, we have the Hamiltonian S2, which is found. Here we say that we displace the phonon variable. So the idea here is just to displace the phonon variable. This is what the second Lilopine transformation is doing on this same Hamiltonian. We can move on, please. Yes, we can move on, please. OK. So we have ended with the, with the application of second Lilopine transformation. Now we can find the energy by, minimize, by applying the vacuum state as it is shown in 30. Now we have to minimize this expression 30 with respect to the variational parameter FQ. And doing this, we can obtain, next slide please. We can obtain the energy of polar run as ratio 31. Please type one time. He is the kinetic energy of electron. If you observe the minimal energy of polaron, we observe that the second term of this energy of polaron has the same form of the kinetic energy of an electron, but it depends. It has a factor of alpha. So here we observe that the kinetic energy now of a polaron greatly depends on the coupling of the electron phonon coupling constant. So the, the term M can then, the polaron effective mass can then be deduced and it has the form of 32. So the difference between the, elect, the Hamiltonian of polaron and electron is that the Hamiltonian of the energy of the polaron and its effective mass really depends on the electron phonon coupling constant. So that is how to calculate that is how to calculate the energy of polaron by applying the Lilopine, the Lilopine method. 
we can show how to, to calculate using the Ubrecht method. We can move on. Yes, we can move on. Okay, to apply Ubrecht, we still use the second, the first Lopin transformation. But the difference between the Lilopine transformation S1 and this one is that we introduce a parameter A. This parameter, this parameter A is used to characterize either the weak coupling, the intermediate coupling, or, or the strong coupling. So this is the idea of modify Lilopine method or Ubrecht method which is also one method used in our, in our work. We can move on. So as we said, A10 to 0 represents the strong coupling for and wrong, and A10 to 1 is, the, is still the same Lilopine method that we presented before. So we can introduce the change of variable. We can change the variable and introduce the two other operators, B, dagger, and B, in order to do, to transform this Hamiltonian. We can move on. So by doing this, we transform, we have the Hamiltonian H, which is expressed in terms of different terms, 37 and 38. Yes, we move on. So in Ubrecht method or modifying little by method, we still use the relation 30, 39. And doing this to displace the phonon variable, we express next slide. Okay. Here we also wanted to find the ground state energy, but using the little by the, the modified little by method or Ubrecht method. So the energy of 4R1 in all coupling is given by relation 44. So this method is more complete than the previous one because it can give the energy in weak coupling, strong coupling, and intermediate coupling. Okay, we can move on, please. Now the Hamiltonian of a bipolar one is given by relation 45. In a bipolar one, we suppose that we have two electrons in the same polar medium. So when we have, we, we have two electrons in the same polar medium, we have the formation due to the polarization created, the two, the two polar ones we wanted to attract themselves. So the last term, the last term of 45 is the is the Coulomb is the Coulombic the Coulombic energy, which can be expressed in terms of U R equals to U on R. Since the bipolar one is a composite particle, we can introduce the transformation of center of mass or relative coordinate. So doing this, we can rewrite the Hamiltonian of bipolar one in terms of a simple in, or in terms of a simple explosion of polar one as given in relation 46. We have also two terms that depends on the relative coordinates, the two last terms that can be added. But finally, using the modified Lopin method or Ubrecht method, we can calculate the ground state energy of bipolar one and in order to see one important parameter while studying bipolar one is the binding energy. So to study the binding energy of bipolar one, we calculate it as relation 47. And when this expression is positive, we say that the bipolar one is stable in the, in the polar medium. So in our work, we calculate different parameters since we said that we studied the dynamic of a qubit or of a qubit in, in semiconductor nanostructure. 
So having the energy, we can calculate all the electronic properties term like probability density, transition frequency, transition amplitude, when we introduce external parameter. Since we are this topic light in nanotechnology term and we need to avoid decoherence, we calculate also the decoherence time, the mobility or the polar run lifetime. These are electronic properties that we usually calculate in our, in our work. Also, we can calculate the optical property like optical absorption or the thermal properties. So it depends of, on, of what we wanted to see in the different system that we want. We can calculate the Shannon entropy, Charles entropy, free energy, internal energy or heat capacity using the partition function as, as you know. Okay, we can move on. So we are going to present different systems that we usually study in, study in our work. So let's consider the relation 48, which is a kind of Hamiltonian. Observe that when the electron deform the, the deform the deforms the polar the polar medium, it can take different form. Here we introduce the polar one in asymmetric potential. The asymmetry here, the second term of this Hamiltonian represents the confining potential and we have omega w or omega x square. So the confinement in x direction is what we call asymmetric potential. We use the method. We use the method that we prefer. So, right, we, we are having trouble hearing you now. It's chopping off. Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes. Is it, is it okay? Now it's fine. Go ahead. Right. Uh, Floret, are you are you talking? We cannot hear you. Yes, hello. Yes. Hello. I want I is Okay. Okay, I will, I will present now I will present the application here is the presentation of different system in different our calculation and we plot in order to highlight the polaronic properties. So here we start by the density, the probability densities. In the, the case where the, the, the potential is symmetric or asymmetric, we can still found the, the polar run. But in the asymmetric case, we observe that the probability density has greater, uh, tend to reach one more than when it is the symmetric one. So it is good, we conclude here that it is good to, to have the, the, the formation of polar run or bipolar run in an asymmetric potential because we can localize the particle easily. 
and here since the asymmetry is is a kind of perturbation of the system we study the decurrence time and we observe that the decurrence time reduces with the confinement length the confinement length is reciprocally is the, the is the inverse of the frequency omega x so lx is the inverse of omega x uh, and by reduced by increasing lx it is good we reduce the decurrence time also by increasing the coupling constant we also reduce the decurrence so in we, in our work we prefer to have uh, to have uh, to design material with very high coupling constant in this kind of system it is good to have material with very high coupling constant and when we we reduce when we increase the reduce the decurrence because the curve of the decurrence is reducing when we increase the length and in nanotechnology we know that we want to design material with with very small dimensionalities so this material the material will be very small and the sequence effect will not will be also will be also reduced we can move on we can move on please okay now we have one 40 please We have quantum dot confining potential on bipolar run. So this Hamiltonian represents the Hamiltonian of bipolar run. Here we have calculated the ground state energy and we observe that the ground state energy negatively increased with confinement strength, but in the first excited state it increased positively. But in both energy, it in the ground state energy increase with coupling constant. So uh, the bipolar run can be quantum is is well confined in a quantum dot. We can move on, please. Now we introduce magnetic field electromagnetic field effect on bipolar run. The introduction of electromagnetic field on bipolar suppose introduce potential vector that depends of magnetic field and the electric field. So we have Hamiltonian 50, the Hamiltonian of a bipolar run. So <laughs> on this, having this, we calculate the energy in ground and first excited state to model the qubit as we observe the two level system that is very important in information theory so we observe that the ground state decreases with the electric field but when the the first excited state uh, it increases with the electric field but both energy increase with the magnetic field so uh, what we conclude that is, is here is that the magnetic field control the particle. The magnetic field control the particle by confining the particle very well. And the electric field, but the electric field in the elect in, but the electric field in, with the electric field we can control the state of the system very well. So both parameter, electric and magnetic field, are used to are used to control the the bipolaronic properties. We can move on, please. Oh, please. Okay. Okay. Still on the same system, we study the decurrence and the entropy, and we observe that. Still, uh, the decurrence the time still plotted as function of our two control parameter f and 
electric field and magnetic field. On, we observe that we can reduce the current. We can reduce the decurrence effect by increasing the magnetic field effect and mm -hmm. reducing the electric field effect. And mm -hmm. we can control also the entropy that characterizes the degree of disorder in the system can be controlled by both parameters. So the system is sensitive to these two field effects and the current is restored. So our this uh, bipolar system, we said that it is an IG system that serves in quantum in quantum computer. Um, excuse we me, can move on. Yes, Paul. There, there is uh, one more question um, on the chat. Yes. I, I read the question: Is the electromagnetic field yes. uh, uh, an applied field to the material? The electro, the electric field and the magnetic field are introduced in, in we call it in general a system. It's a bipolaronic system. It's a bipolar. It's a system. The potential characterizes the material. The potential can characterize the material because we can say that the materials have can have the form of a parabolic, two par. Uh, a quantum well, for example, a well or a wire or a dot. So in general, that is what we call a, the material as a gallium arsenide that we use in our work is the material. But here, the mm. describe the quasi part. We just wanted to highlight the effect of the quasi particle in the material. I don't know if it is okay. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I guess the question was much more simple. Uh, you apply an external yes. magnetic field on the crystal, right? Y yes. Okay, I, I think that was the question. Thank you. Please go on. Okay, thank you. Okay, we, we said that the coherence can be restored. And since in quantum, in quantum technology, we want to design quantum computer, we, just, we, can, we propose this kind of system that can serve to, to design this quantum computer. We can move on, please. Another effect that we add in, that we introduced in our work is the laser, the laser effect. So after introducing an uh, electromagnetic field effect, we introduce also laser effect on polaron. So here, the, the laser parameter is described by the last term of relation 51. So remember that the IJ is having the Hamiltonian we use either the Lillopi method or variational Lillopi method or Pekan method, and we calculate the different parameter. Here, having the after, and the first parameter that we usually calculate is the energy, uh, because the energy is used that we presented before. So we show here the result of the decurrence time. Uh, versus the coupling constant at fixed laser frequency. We observe that uh, there are some value of the, 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 there are some value of the coupling constant where the system is not sensible to the, to the laser effect because the sequence time is zero. This is, so these are, I, we, are, we are here on figure 14. So in one coupling constant, one on coupling constant between around 1.7, like that. So we have the, the decoyance time, which is zero. So these are very good uh, results that 
because the system that we wanted to design sometimes is the, is the system that do not consider, that are not sensible to the external parameter. We know that these are some kind of perfect case and which is not usual, which is not, which is not very useful, not useful, which is not common in the literature. So, but we found this kind of result in this, in our, in the polaronic system. Also, we plotted the sequence time versus time. We observed that the laser frequency can help to reduce the sequence time. So, the laser frequency on the entropy that character that is used is studied here to describe the degree of disorder. We observe that we can control we can control the disorder in the system by introducing <laughs> by reducing the laser frequency. So the laser here in general is used show two effects. It can be used to trap the particle or to cool the, the to cool the particle in the system. And the result that we publish here from this work has been done is show that it is possible to realize uh, the condensation of the particle in our system. So this work can also be explained in the Bose-Einstein condensate problem. We can move on, please. Laser. So this is now the laser effect on bipolar run. So we plot the energy as function of the laser frequency and we observe that the energy depends on the laser frequency because the energy evolves following the form of the laser choose. We observe the laser frequency is the cosine form here. And the energy also varies with the frequency and the Coulombic constant. So all these parameters affect the ground state energy of, of the bipolar run. We can move on. Uh, the, the coherence time here is plotted too, so we can restore the coherence by introducing, by varying uh, the, the, laser the laser frequency, the confinement strength of the polaron and so So the laser, the laser can serve to cool and trap also a bipolar one. Hello? Yes. Okay, we, we can move on, please. Now we present the laser effect of magne on magneto bipolar one. The name magneto bipolar one here is used to, it's just, Use when we introduce a magnetic field in a in a bipolaronic Hamiltonian. So some scientists g g gave the name of bi magneto bipolaron of this kind of, of, of particle. When they, they we add also different confinement confinements confinement potential. So we have as the term in bracket, the second term in bracket is a asymmetric potential, but we, have, we still have the magnetic field introduced and the laser field introduced as an electric field. So we observe that we plot the same parameter, but here we, plotted, we have plotted the binding energy and we observe that the binding energy is positive, uh, figure 25. 
and the binding energy depends also on the laser intensity or laser laser frequency. We can still have the the coherence the current the coherence of our system by varying the laser frequency and the magnetic field parameter. We can move on, please. Now we apply our system to graphene to graphene structures. Uh, graphene is a, a no. It's okay, Paul. It's okay. Okay. In in gra graphene is found in graph in graphite and it is also common here. We can have we can have it this kind of material or structure here around us. So we wanted to apply it to study our results on graphene materials, where, which can be found also here in, in Africa around us. So we still start by the amito. So we introduce a magnetic field. We study the mobility of bipolaron, effective mass. These are different characteristics of the of the quasi particle that, that we can study, and we observe that the the bipolaron is is moving in a in a in a graph in a graphene when the wave vector of this of of this graphene is very low it's very low but when the laser increases when the laser intensity increases the mobility reduces and when the laser frequency increases the mobility increases so the laser intensity and laser frequency control the mobility and the effective mass of, of bipolar one in graphene. We can move on. So we study also the optical absorption and thermodynamic property like Stellis entropy. Okay, Paul, type one time, please. Okay. We observe that a graphene can produce light absorption when the laser intensity is very low. And the reduction of absorption proves that the energy absorbed is dissipated into phonon and electron hole pairs. So the structure can be thermalized due to the observation of the result of entropy. Because the entropy increases till reaching a stable value. Yes, poof. On the same system, we studied two other important thermodynamic parameters like uh, internal energy and heat capacity. So as, as the conclusion made before that the system can be thermalized, we observed that the, the antenna energy is negative and varying with laser, laser intensity and laser frequency. So these two parameters control both the thermodynamic, the optical property, the, the optical property and the thermodynamic properties. So this is a good system to store energy by observing the result of the heat capacity. We can move on. And now this is another open topic in our thesis, which is still going on. So it is the screening effect of an excitonic state in extrinsic semiconductor. Here we study just electron hole interaction. So it's still an open, and here we use, uh, the only method used is the Feynman path integral method. So we suppose that we are in a semiconductor. We have uh, an electron which leaves the valence band to the conduction band. So in figure 38A, we have a pure semiconductor and 38B, a semi-impurity. 
where the electrons are moving from level one to level two. So stem and we have the Hamiltonian variation 2i. Hamiltonian is written d I, which characterize the 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 fermionic the fermionic field the fermionic field and later on we introduce the bosonic field we can we can move on um, could you repeat that, uh, Florette? We can hear very well. Is it okay? Hello? Yeah, now. Could you restart from this page? Hello? Yes. Okay. I I'm saying that the idea of, of FEMA to calculate, and from here, we and have a uh, different other. so we try to calculate the trace the trace is given in terms of of green function the green function as we observe in relation 5i we have the green function function and we have the other function that appear due to the fluctuation introduced. Since we have a uh, excitonic particle, uh, exciton, we consider that uh, when the electron leaves the balance, it is still linked to the, to the place that it left. So we introduce the electrostatic, we introduce we found that the electrostatic potential is still present in the system. And uh, doing the Fourier transform in the random phase approximation, we calculate this uh, potential as given by UQ. We can we use another method, with another form of method, which is the beta sub beta equation. Expressed in terms of green function, we can find the polarization function. We can move on, please. So we found, in this work, we found the polarization function, which is, which depends on the density, on density of the particle and on the energy, on the energy of, of the particle. So in this work, we just try to look to found, to, to, we try to find uh, the polarization, the density energy, the energy of the system, which is given in terms of gap energy. And after that, we try to find the, the Feynman diagram of this system that appear and fluctuation and fluctuation term. So this is just an open term that we are still we are still working on. Okay, we can move on. So we we present uh, the different uh, the different method uh, the different method that are useful to highlight the properties electronic uh, optical and thermodynamic property of polar one. Our work is done in different, in different structures, the cadmium telluride, uh, gallium arsenide, uh, potassium chloride. And we observe that uh, the polar one or bipolar one can, can be confined in different nanostructures, field, laser field, and on graphene. We also observe interesting results. We found that our results are 
uh, less sensible to decurrence effect. So we try to solve the problem of decurrence in this, which affect uh, very well the nano, which affect the system in nanotechnology. We can move on, please. Okay, our work in general uh, apply in the I done in the improvement of information transmission in optical fiber, secondary information, improvement of quantum cryptography, information storage, improving semiconductor performance. So in general, that uh, the application of the, the work that they are doing uh, in this in this domain to participate to contribute in this domain of the research we can move on please we can move on please that's page 57 okay uh, these are okay Pope, yes Okay, these are some few uh, few papers that we did with some colleagues in Morocco and Turkey uh, or Benin. Also in Benin, we collaborate with uh, scientists in Benin, Turkey, and Morocco for a time. Okay, we can move on. Thank you for your kind attention. Okay, thank you very much, Laurette, for this uh, very interesting work that you've presented. Um, I see on the chat that there are two questions. So um, I think now that we're in the end, uh, maybe uh, Jean-Baptiste, you can ask directly your, your question. You can turn on your microphone and directly ask your question. Please go ahead, Jean Baptiste. Uh, sorry. Please, I'm not getting this. Yeah, the sound is really too low. Can you turn up your microphone or? Okay. I was saying that uh, during the presentation, the band, yes. the band energy was yes. was positive. Yes. Uh, I want to know that. Uh, I don't know if. Uh, all the time the band energy is positive because during my research review i noticed that the band energy is yes. negative because the band energy is the, is the energy that permit to divide the, the atom or the molecules uh, yes. i want to know if the band energy the sign of the band energy depends on the domain yes thank you okay here yeah, the the band on the on the numerical result that we present the binding energy is is just, just studied in the in bipolaronic problem as we observe as i shown before i said that uh, the condition of stability of a bipolaron is is give is is given when we study the binding energy of a bipolaron and this binding energy has to be positive is the binding energy of a bipolar one that we are studying here? Okay, Hello. Yes, uh, I'm getting you. So yes, yes it's, it's the condition of stability of of a bipolar one ah, okay. that we want to highlight. Okay. Hello. Okay, I'm here. Thanks. I think that uh, is okay. good now because uh, the binding energy of molecules yes. are negative. Means mm -hmm. that the band energy of polaron or bipolaron is negative. Okay, I can yes. understand now. Yes. So thank you. Yes. Okay, thank, thank you too. Okay. Um, there is another question by Diuma. Uh, Diuma, do you want to ask yes. a question? Hello? Yes, hello. Yes. Uh, uh, my name is Juma Kobo. I just uh, ask a question on uh, how can we measure uh, the alpha 
uh, experimentally. Uh, I want to know, I know I see this, uh, this expression, mm -hmm. but uh, I, for yeah. experimentally, is it possible to determine that or it is by calculation? Uh, experimentally, on the table that we present at the beginning of the talk, we presented uh, the, the a table that shown the the coupling constant of different materials. We just we have just taken at the beginning. We have just taken the 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 coupling constant. That has been obtained experimentally, but we are, we don't know the the method the method how to find it experimentally. We just know how to calculate how to obtain how uh, how to change it in our result, but experimentally we don't know specifically how to obtain it. But we know that different materials are characterized by the coupling constant. So these, uh, do you have these references that you can maybe the reference five and yes, uh, yes, yes. So maybe can you, can you uh, maybe Juma and maybe these references would have uh, I'll, I'll, some explanation I'll of see. how how the the this this uh, constants are, are measured. Yeah, but yeah. the the reference here, the <laughs> reference here are the reference that we. We study the bipolar one by using these these factors. Uh -huh. We're not sometimes we are not using the the experimental patch uh, papers to work. So these have been taken in uh, also uh, the book of our professor here that we he present this kind of variable, this table. Okay. okay. Hello. Yes. Thank you. Um, okay. Yes. Um, I think there are also a few questions by uh, Defi yes. Junior. Uh, Defi, okay. can you go ahead and ask your questions? Hello. Hello. Is Defi still connected? Yes, he's connected. I see his hand is uh, risen and his microphone is on, but we cannot hear him. Are you listening? It's okay. Yeah, now yes. we can hear you. Hello. Yes, uh, yes. go away. Okay, so I, I want to greet uh, everyone and also thank um, Dr. Florette for her uh, impressive and also uh, con uh, comprehensive work. I mean, this is so much work. I am so impressed. I have, I have some questions. The first yeah. question can be in, a naive question. Uh, like you, at the beginning of the, the talk, you talked about the, the Polaron. And I would like to know, yeah. uh, given that, uh, because you, you mentioned that the Polaron had a negative charge. It's, it's negative, it can be assumed to, be, have, to have a negative charge. So I would like to know the source of the post positive charge that will uh, actually bind uh, uh, two polaron uh, to find to um, to uh, to get the B polaron. So that that would be my first question. Yes. Okay. Yes. Can I answer? Yes. Uh, yeah. Please, if you want to answer the first part, go ahead. Okay. I, I, I can mention all my questions then, uh, or maybe we can. Uh, I, I think it's easier if she, if she answers this way, she doesn't have to remember the, the full list yes. of questions. But you okay. can interact. I mean, she can answer the first part and then you can ask your, your other questions. Is it okay? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. As I said, the bipolar realm exists when the repulsion force between the two polarons is very weak because we are still in the same crystal. So uh, the the view that the artistic view that I presented 
was showing the electron in a polar medium, one electron. When you suppose, if you suppose that we have two electrons, the same, the same, uh, and the same uh, motion will be, will, will appear in the polar medium, but at one time, the two polarons, there will be a position where the two polarons wanted to attract together. It's like copper pair, the copper pair. In the, so we explain better the bipolar uh, in copper pairs because the two copper, the copper pairs have the same charge, but they attract together. So the idea of bipolar is the same. So when the repulsion okay. falls, we know that two negative charge cannot be cannot attract together. But for bipolar one, we observe that two negative charge attract together because the repulsion force is very weak. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, my second question was concerning the the the, the decurrence time. I think that is in slide yeah. thirty nine. Slide thirty nine. Yeah. I think it was the slide where we have uh, uh, an idea of the uh, evolution of the decurrence time. Uh, yes, I think this one. Yes, we do. So, so I will, uh, I'm not very used to the to the field. I, I, I'm, I'm, but I, I would like to know, please. You, we, we see a kind of two. It's a two uh, decreasing, uh, like a two-fold regime. When talking the when taking the decurrence time with the the length. So I, I just want yes. to know, like there's the first regime which, uh, be, between zero and let's say 0 0.5, where, mm -hmm. where the decurrence time reduce, re reduces very uh, quickly. So I, I would like to know, I would like to know uh, what, what can be the cause of that. Okay. Thank you. Here we, when the, the energy, the the confinement length, Lx reduces when it, it has a very weak value. The decurrence time reduces. The decurrence time reduces, and when we it start to increase, it keeps a constant value. But in general, we observe the result here of the decurrence time by the decreasing the, by the decreasing form that we we explain but the breaking the 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 strong the strong uh, decreases is not we we have not explained it uh, as as i remember we have not explaining especially especially with with a kind of phenomenon with a kind of a phenomenon we, we, just observe the general behavior of the decrease. Okay, okay thank Hello. you. Thank you very much. I have a thank last you. question. And um, uh, you, 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 uh, you mentioned that it is possible to actually um, uh, have a kind of quantum qubit with uh, a bipolar yes. Is yes. it? So, so I would just like what to uh, like to understand uh, which one is it? Is it better to to yeah. is it better to construct quantum qubits with polarons or bipolarons based on your based on your research? Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, by considering the effect that because we 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 just study different uh, some kind of system and for that we study for in bipolar ones. So to do this comparison, comparison uh, specifically, we cannot answer. But our work, our thesis in general was based on bipolar one. Because bipolar one has, can be applied, can be applied in nanotechnology problem in so 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 supraconductivity problem too. Since we said that bipolar one is like copper pairs, mm -hmm. and the copper pairs are very well explained in superconductivity. 
So bipolar run can, the result obtained from bipolar run are more, are in different domain than the one of polar run. So here we, we, we propose, it's, it's true that we started one, some of our results with, with polar run in order to better understand. But here we know that we say that a uh, bipolar run is very important. It's a quasi part, it's a very important quasi particle to study because it can be it has application in many in many or in many domains. I don't know. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, thank you, thank Hello. you very much. Uh, thank you very, very much, and uh, I wish you more, more, much more success in your endeavor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So there, there is uh, one or two more questions from Daniel, uh, uh, whose uh, microphone is not working. So I'll try to read the question. Uh, so first, thank you very much for the nice talk. Uh, please explain. Uh, uh, the, to me, the figure 13. Can you go back to figure 13? Yeah, that's so figure One of the question is, what is the meaning of periodic entropy? Is it a static disorder equivalent to the Debye well parameter? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel, for the question. Here we, the, the entropy, I want to explain to describe the degree of disorder in the system. What? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. When the entropy we follow the, the evolution of entropy with electric field. And we observe that the entropy evolves currently when we have, when we increase, when we increase uh, the magnetic field, the, the cyclotron frequency. But when the cyclotron frequency is very high, the current form, we explain the entropy here by coherence or by coherence or decoherence. So we want to restore the coherence in the system. But if we aligned together, if the curve were aligned together, we explain it by a total coherence in the system. But we observe that by increasing considerably the magnetic field in the system, there will be a decoherence. The, so we explain the fact that the curve are not aligned together in the same point by the decoherence effect. So it means that the disorder is present in the system, but this disorder can be controlled by reducing, uh, by reducing the value of of the magnetic field in the system. So the, the entropy here have periodic form, but by in, increasing the magnetic field, the curve are not aligned together. And we, we explain this one by the disorder, which is still present in the system. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it is the question. Hello? Mm -hmm. And, and then there, there is a second part of the question. Um, does a yes. polar run form when an exciton is dis dissociated for a low uh, dielectric medium, like in Frankel exciton? Does a polar run form when an exciton is dissociated? I, Could you repeat uh, the question, Steve? I don't know. Um, I, I will repeat the question. Does a polaron form when an exciton is dissociated for a low dielectric medium, like in the Frankel excitons? 
I think uh, the, uh, in in by studying exciton, we talk about electron hole interaction uh, without a phonon. So, but here in the polar one, we have a phonon. So I don't know if uh, the polar one can be formed when an exciton is dissociated for a di Because uh, in the either, except the case that we have exciton polar one. I don't know if you want you want to talk about exciton polar one. Uh, I'm not sure. But we have not studied exciton polar one here, please. Yeah, not not really. That's not what he's talking about. Um, yeah, he's he mentioned that you associate the polaron with an electron, but not with a hole. And mm -hmm. I want to talk about polaron due to a hole. Yeah, that's precisely uh, his uh, second question, I think. Hello? Yes. yes, so when an electron is associated with a hole, why, what does that can you make an polaron out of this? Um, not really. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, I don't see other questions, but maybe I have one question myself. Um, so um, I, I, so I, there is, some, yeah, there is something that I would like to understand. When you have a bipolar run, you seem to have some condensation effect. And my question is that, is it due to the fact that the spin, that the spin of the polar run is, um, is a half integer? I mean, when the polar run is, a, a, is fermionic. Do, do you understand my question? My question is that if you have two um, quasi particle or systems that are fermionic, they can condensate to form uh, a global scalar. And I wonder if this is at play when you uh, form bipolar because you still have a small repulsion between the, because of the electric charges. Are you there, Florette? Hello. Yes. Hello. Did yes. you have the other question? No, please. Uh, okay, I, I will re Hello? Uh, uh, rephrase my question. My, my question is that yes, I, tried to, I tried to compare with the Cooper pairs, and I wonder if you yes, can bro. form bipolaron when the, both polarons yes. have, are fermionic where their spin is half integer and, and therefore they can condensate to form a scalar. Is, is it the case or? Oh, uh, yeah. oh, sorry, we cannot hear you. Hello. Yes, now we can hear you. Yes, okay. Well, here we have not we have not studied the, the, the spin the spin of the particle, but is it is true that uh, the bipolar one is can be formed when the spin when the, the we we can have the spin up and the spin the the, the spin up and the one spin of one state and one spin down of another polaron state. Okay. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm yeah. hearing you, yes. Okay, th thank you. I, I think I, I, I get the point, yes. 
Thank you. I don't know if there are other questions. Yeah, I, I want to make a comment, Steve. Um, thank yes, you. Uh, Florette, um, thanks very, very, very much for this uh, study. Uh, I think like Diffie said, it's really very impressive. Um, I would like to recognize some people here. We have Professor Asbandin Buronga <clears throat> here from uh, Nelson Mandela University in South Africa. Um, <clears throat> he's, he's, he's a theorist. That does a lot of work in uh, in uh, um, uh, in, in uh, uh, nuclear physics, uh, heavy ion theory, fluid dynamics, and so forth. We also have here yeah, Professor Diuma Kubo from uh, uh, University of Zigensho in, in in Senegal. Uh, he also does a lot of work in, in, uh, in the area of uh, um, of uh, solar energy applications, uh, material uh, physics. And we also have here Professor uh, uh, Daniel Wamwangi from uh, the University of Viswatas Rand. He's also in uh, material physics. So we have some very, uh, uh, we, you know, um, very uh, um, high caliber professors here to, uh, uh, to, to attend your talk, um, Florette. Um, so I think that is great. And I would like to say that Florette is uh, currently looking for a postdoc position. So if um, any of uh, the colleagues here, um, um, you know, can um, help with recommendation, uh, that would be appreciated. I think she has done very, very impressive work and, uh, and we would like to see uh, uh, this type of uh, uh, effort uh, continue. Thank you, Paul. Okay, Steve, I will get it back to you. Um, okay, M maybe one, one of the professors want to just uh, maybe say a comment about the talk. So uh, there is one comment by uh, Professor Muranga. Uh, thank you for the wonderful talk. And I think also I'm not an expert at all in this field, but I, I think this was very nice and you present, mostly present really a uh, um, uh, uh, great amount of, of work. So um, congratulations for it, it's, it looks thank great. You. Thank you very much. Um, other questions or comments? Uh, yes, Prof. I have a... What? I have a preoccupation, please. Can I see the last... Uh, the last slide? Where you have your... You have your articles. Yes, great. I see you have a uh, sixteen sixteen article published. It means that you have a lot of uh, you have done a lot of work. And I appreciate your collaboration. So your work, you, are, you have an international, an international relationship with other people. That's great. Yeah, this is really fantastic. I think Florette mentioned that uh, <clears throat> there were some collaboration with people in Morocco, uh, Turkey, and Benin. I recognize some of the people here, uh, some of the people on this list, uh, at least the people from Benin. <clears throat> I also see some people from Nigeria here. Um, so, okay. um, yeah, this is, this is very good. Uh, uh, Florette, uh, I don't know if you have seen in the chat, there is, uh, yes. I think, Professor Wamwangi uh, from Wits University in South Africa that uh, yes. says it's an excellent talk and he's asking to you to send uh, your CV. So, yeah. Yes, well, I, 
Thank you. All right. I will. I will, I will give you uh, his email, uh, Florette, and you can send your CV to Professor Wangi. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Okay, Steve. I think we can close the session, right? Yeah, I think um, it, it was very nice. There was some interaction and and interesting questions. I think now it's uh, time to stop. So I will stop the recording and thank um, the speaker, Florette, again with congratulations. Thank you. And thank the people thank who connected to this session. Okay, Christine. thank you very much. Yes?